Hello. Look what we have here. This is <laughs> heavy. It is the Dayton Ultimax 18 inch dual two ohm voice coil with 22 millimeters of peak linear excursion. So, what we're going to do with this is put it down. It's heavy. I think it weighs like 40 pounds or something. So anyway, I've seen some YouTube videos testing this driver, but the problem is they talk about things like, uh, well, you know, it shakes things off the wall in the next room, and you know, any any large driver like this with a lot of excursion can do that. So that's not really a good test. A good test is to look at things like uh, mechanical noise, uh, nonlinear distortion, and so on. So that's what we want to do. And actually, we've already looked at mechanical noise, and I unfortunately don't have the amplifier that I was using to do that for this video, but uh, we were putting in 150 volts peak to peak, which is about 700 watts, at 10 hertz, and the thing was moving a lot. I mean, probably close to its uh, 22 millimeters peak excursion, and it was still pretty quiet. It wasn't completely quiet, but it was very close to it, and that's unusual. I didn't expect that at all. I thought it would be pretty noisy with that much excursion, but it wasn't, and I was really Happy to see that because I'm hoping to use these in my new home theater and I wouldn't use them if they were really noisy. So I was thinking maybe I'd have to go with a larger number of drivers, uh, maybe a bunch of 15 inch drivers or something. So, But I think I can use this, uh, use about six of them and it'll work out really well because not only is it low noise but the distortion is pretty good. Uh, you can only do so good on, on distortion with a driver like this. Uh, you can actually do a lot better if you build something, but that's not really easy to do. You have to build a complex system of mechanical low-pass filters, a, a smaller driver moving a larger diaphragm, and uh, that's not easy to set up properly to make it work, but if you can do that, I've seen that get three orders of magnitude, uh, better distortion or lower distortion than a driver like this. So, but for now, let's just do some distortion testing. Okay, we have this thing running at 10 hertz with about 56 volts peak to peak, which is just shy of 100 watts. And I don't know if you can tell on the video, but it's not making any noise at all. At that amount of excursion, which is quite a bit, it's completely dead silent. I'm really surprised. I didn't expect it to be that good. So we're monitoring to make sure we don't clip the signal. We're driving this with an Agilent 33120 uh, function generator. So we've got a nice clean tone going into it. And it's just uh, dead silent. Very impressive. A lot of woofers can't do that. Okay, for this distortion test, we're going to be using a program called ARTA, and it's going to step through frequencies and increments and measure the distortion. We're using an Earthworks M30 microphone, which is a calibrated microphone. Uh, from 3 hertz to, I think it's 30 kilohertz, but we're only going to be measuring from about 5 hertz to about uh, 300 hertz. And we're going to be also monitoring, make sure we're not clipping, and also at about 56 volts, so just right at 100 watts, like 98 point something. So we can see that the third harmonic went below the second at uh, somewhere around 25 hertz or so. It's a 10 dB per division scale. So right now the second's running 
30 something dB down, the thirds 40 or so dB down, a little over 40 dB down, which is not too bad. We have to monitor, make sure we're not clipping the front end or the microphone. Third harmonics coming back up at 100 hertz, but we probably don't want to use it that high anyway. And so our final result at 100 watts is actually pretty impressive. It's not great at 10 hertz, but then you're not going to find a driver that is. Not any that I know of anyway. From about 25 hertz to close to 100 hertz, 90 hertz, 80 hertz, something like that. It's very good. Second harmonic is a good 30 dB down. Uh, third harmonic is 40 dB down. That's better than I expected, actually. So I'm definitely going to use these in the new theater. Uh, I'm not going to use them for the, the open baffle that's going to be on each end of the screen. That's going to be a 15-inch driver, which is from Newark, formerly MCM Electronics. It's uh, a very low-cost 15-inch woofer like 20 bucks each, something like that in quantities. Uh, it actually performs a little bit better uh, for an open baffle in the probably 50, 40, 50 hertz range up to a little over 100 hertz. So I'm going to use eight of those on each side of the screen in an H-frame open baffle, and probably six of these Ultimax 18s in the attic as infinite baffle. So I think uh, that will work pretty well. These will be primarily responsible for around 30 or 35 hertz down, but they'll also be used to smooth out the response in the room at higher bass frequencies. Uh, each pair, left and right pair, will be on its own DSP, so they can all be fine-tuned for, you know, phase and amplitude at, at different frequencies and stuff to smooth out the response. So there will be basically three pairs of these plus the dipole at the front. So essentially four pairs of woofers to be used to control uniformity of bass in the room. So with this distortion performance, I'm pretty happy with them. It would be nice if it were better. But one thing to consider in order to avoid clipping on the front end, I had to move the microphone pretty high away from the driver. And it's open. So if you know anything about a dipole, there's a roll-off at the rate of 6 dB per octave. Or you can look at it the other way around. If you're going up in frequency, it's 6 dB per octave uh, rising. So in other words, we're seeing the dipole effect at the fundamental, this green line, but not so much on the others. So the second harmonic is really probably about 6 dB lower than what we're measuring, and the third is probably about 12 dB lower than what we're measuring. So if we measure this in a box or in an infinite baffle, we'll probably find that that third harmonic below 25 hertz will probably be below the second. And both the second and the third will be better. So it's not really a fair test to look at this data and say this is what the distortion is. It's actually going to be better than this in anything other than an open baffle. So put it in any kind of a sealed box or, in, like I said, an infinite baffle, and those, that distortion is going to be lower. So I think this is going to be a really good driver. 
and it's definitely an impressive looking driver. I have to say, it is definitely a nice looking woofer. So I'm gonna be ordering a bunch more of these.